Hello everyone. I recently updated my simple icon creator and I thought I would do a video showcasing those improvements. So to start, this is the new tool. If any of you are familiar with the old tool, it was very just hashed together. I was, here's a demonstration I'll show you. This is what I had made before. I wasn't interested in anything fancy. I wanted to just create a simple tool that lets you create icons. That's where the name came from. It had a viewport which allowed you to load objects and then some options. Later on, I even added the option for a background texture and it served its purpose. You could put it in an object and quickly create an icon from it, but it definitely had its flaws. And over time, I've thought about fixing those and then finally I was motivated to do so, especially after seeing the layouts of some other people's editor tools. I was inspired to make a better looking tool myself. And then there were some features I realized I really wanted, and that's what really drove me to update my tool. And that was because I had recently gotten some new GUI from the sale that's going on right now. And you see these icons here using them, and I realized I needed foreground textures. And I also realized I kind of wanted to manipulate the scene a bit more. And so I decided just to do this huge update to my tool. So we'll go over that, those, those big changes. So first of all, you don't see anything but four squares that are all blank except for titles. That's because we need to load an object first. So if you were to get this tool, you would just drop this file into your folder base. Up here, you would have my Battle Drake Studios menu item that gets created, and then you would just load the tool by clicking on it. Then you would click on this or drag and drop an object in to create an icon of it. So we'll find an item, let's do um, mushrooms. Why not? And it will automatically load those into a custom preview window for you, much like what you see on the inspector on some things like animation stuff. This custom preview window here gives you movement options that I've custom set to match a tool set that I used to use by, uh, for the game Neverwinter Nights Aurora. So we'll go over those real quick so you know how those work. There is documentation on them, but you know, you may just want to hear about them. First of all, you have your scroll wheel. If you hold down the scroll wheel as a button, that's what controls the movement. If you hold shift, like just like in your window here, it speeds it up. So now it moves okay. It depends on how close it is. If I hold shift, you notice it moves a lot faster, a lot further. Then we have the scroll wheel. If you scroll up and down, that zooms in and out of it. If you hold shift, zooms in and out really fast. Next, we have a three axis rotation that's separated individually by the movement of the mouse and the buttons you click. I separated them because doing direct diagonal rotation is really awkward when you don't have a gizmo, and I felt it just was very odd for aligning objects. So, what you have is you have your left click, which will rotate. If you rotate left click, left and right, it will rotate the object around the y axis or the yaw. If you go up and down, It'll rotate around the X axis or the pitch. If you try to go diagonal, like I said, it won't work. It'll do one or the other. It'll either go up and down or left and right. Then if you do right click, that is how you do the roll or the rotation around the Z axis. So you use the difference between those. You just use those to set up your model for the icon. They may take some getting used to as with any new controls, but I feel like they get they work really well for setting up icons really quick, especially if you get used to them. Then moving on to the other options, we have the icon options. A lot of them are the same from before. You had your transparency, true or false. With this transparency, it's the same as before where I use the color magenta in order to set transparency. So it automatically, because there's no alpha channel in these preview render textures, I have to use another method. I've tried to go through an alpha channel and that's just not an option. So what I do is, is I create the whole background to be the color magenta. And then when it converts to a PNG, I take every pixel that is magenta and I just make it a clear pixel. So it's, it gets you that transparency you're looking for. It's an old trick that used to be used way back when, which is why you can find sprites that are surrounded by the color magenta because that's how they used to do it. That's how I do it with this tool. If you need to do it with a different color, maybe you have an icon that is, or an object that is magenta, you can always change it to be a different color if you want. It's uh, one line in the code. 
you go into the icon creator window here you go down to on enable here's the transparency color i made it a variable to easily change if let's say everything that's blue you need it to be transparent to set it to blue and then now when you save it everything that is trans everything that's blue will automatically be transparent um, but we'll go ahead and keep it magenta because that's the color that i don't have anything to use i want everything magenta to be transparent and then moving on from there we have uh, the background texture and then i've got a list of from that new pack that i acquired we'll go ahead and use green and we'll load that because that matches with the mushroom you'll notice here that there's this border that doesn't that's not because of the viewport window the viewport window is set to 256 and it will stretch any texture to match that size that extra border there is from the icon itself whatever the maker of this icon did he made it with a its own like five pixel border for whatever reason probably because they made foreground frames that cover it up i'm guessing is why they did that so we'll go ahead and use a frame we'll go ahead and use a green one and there it goes it covers up and you don't see it at all and there's no additional border as you can see and transparency isn't going to work here it's not going to make anything transparent because there's no into that can shine through there then moving on and you can reset these if you do that it'll set these all back to their base values and then moving on to the window options i've added new ones that my previous tool didn't have and that was color options and intensity so with these preview windows i use a preview render utility and that utility gives you a camera and two lights in the scene and those are the lights that you can manipulate you have your main light which is the one that's focused straight on to the object and you can adjust its intensity and you can also change the color of it, giving the option to do that in case you want to, maybe you feel like it would look nicer with a different color on it. Then there's the second color, which is off to the right of the object. And you might notice that, some slight change there. You won't notice, it depends on the object and how much is facing to the right. But uh, that's what the second light does. I did think about adding positions for the lights, but because you can't have gizmos, you can't see lights anywhere, it would just be vector threes that you'd be manipulating, and that'd be really weird, and I don't think anybody would want to do that, especially for a simple icon creator, so I just left those out. You have the front one and the one to the right, and those are your lighting options for that object. And then we come over to our save options. You have the option to change the resolution. Uh, that's just an enum inside the folder here. I just went with some ones that I thought might be common. You can add more if you want. Um, like 16 by 16 but that wouldn't look very good or maybe a specific icon size that you want that's not a power of two the typical power of two that they go with then there's the option to name the icon whatever you want we'll go ahead and name it mushroom one that works and then i've also added the ability to change the save path so before it saved in my folder structure but now you can just save it in whatever folder structure you have now let's say we it automatically starts at the assets and then you just add the folder name that you want to move to. We'll go ahead and do icons. Boom. Everything else is saved. Go ahead and do that. It creates the icon here. We just need to switch that to sprites. Drop it in our scene. And there we go. We now have an icon that we can use in games. And that's that easy. Um, there's also other options to do something like this. Um, as you see here, uh, what I've done here with these ones, I've increased the light. That's why I really like the light intensity option is by just brightening them a bit. I think it looks a little better here. On the other hand, I had to do a special trick. I wanted to showcase that and what I had to do. So let's say I wanted to do that. I wanted to do a portrait, a circular portrait, a square one. There'd be no problem, but a circular one counters a problem. And we'll show that. So first we'll do the circle background and then we need a circle foreground. I didn't do that. Now we set it to transparent. That all works except for the object shows through because the transparency is the back background and not the front ground. If it was the front ground or the foreground, it would hide the mushroom. You wouldn't be able to see it at all in the in the center or the sides. So to fix that, what I did is I went into GIMP and you can use paint or GIMP or whatever, and I colored the edges. I took the original frame, the red one in this case, and I colored the corners magenta. 
and then I took that one and then I can place that as the foreground texture. So now these are the color magenta that's a foreground texture that hides it. You leave the transparency set to true so that way it looks for those magenta colored. And then now if I create the icon, now it creates it without the base. And the one thing you will notice though is that there is gonna be some, and this entirely depends on your GUI icons. Like not all of them are the same. It depends on how the borders are on those objects, but sometimes you will see this bleeding of the magenta, and that's just because of how they blend in. They tend to blend and create this slight, like that's not exactly magenta, it's a different color, and that's why it doesn't get picked up and made clear. Unfortunately, I, I've applied every filter mode I can to help reduce it, and I definitely reduced it a lot more than it used to be, but I can't completely eliminate it. And like I said, it's also based on the icon itself. Some icons, it's worse than others. So it has to do with however the borders are done by the makers. And then part of the filtering process that goes with this rendering, it's just something that happens. I tend not to notice it. It's not all that noticeable at one. You see, I don't even, I mean, it might be a little bit, maybe you take it into your own paint or gimp and touch it up. But you have the basics of, an icon, a really simple icon that you can create and set together, and then you can just fine tune it later whenever you need to. And that was the goal I set out with this tool, and I found it, and the updates I feel like really make it a lot better than it used to be. And um, with this tool, you know, you, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Make sure to post them down below in the comments. If you have any questions or need any support with this tool, it is gonna be on my GitHub for free at github.com slash battledrake. If you need support, send me an email don't use the comment section some people like to do that and i don't see them because i don't get notified just send an email to battledrakestudios at gmail.com that email is also in the readme and on the github send me an email and i will respond as quick as possible if you need any help with it if you're having any issues let me know and i will get back to you and help you out with that if there's anything you need would like to see in this tool anything updated i can also look into that as well so um, yeah, like I said, get it at GitHub. Let me know what you think. Uh, I hope you like the look of it. I hope you enjoy its use as I do. And thank you for watching.